Hello and welcome, my name is Evan Butson and this is a Premiere Pro CS5 quick tip and today we're going to be covering the DSLR support within Adobe Premiere CS5. Um, I think the explosion of DSLR cameras in the last uh, year or so has been uh, amazing and I think it's caught a lot of companies um, off guard. And we've had a situation where we've had this incredible footage that these cameras are shooting but no real way of editing the footage. Um, at the moment, most companies uh, that, uh, that offer some form of support for DSLRs generally will do it by converting to another format, be that ProRes 422 or Avid's DNX HD. But there are some inherent problems with um, converting footage to another format, apart from the fact that you will always get quality loss no matter what uh, format you're converting to. Even if the quality loss is marginal, it is still quality loss. The other thing is you are sometimes going to lose uh, some of the, the, the benefits of that format in the conversion because you have to bake in decisions such as frame rate. Premiere Pro CS5, however, makes use of a new feature called the Mercury Playback Engine, which uh, accelerates all of the video playback uh, throughout Adobe Premiere, not specifically to DSLR formats. Um, however, it does allow for Premiere to playback uh, formats such as that from the Canon 5D Mark II or 7D or the Nikon D300S in real time uh, without any conversion at all. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So let's go ahead and grab in, we'll go and grab in some uh, a Nikon D300S piece of material to begin with. And so we see we've got my nice little uh, file here. I'll actually bring that into my project window just so you can see this is 1280 by 720, 24 frames per second material. Now, in the old days, I could go ahead and choose new sequence. And you'll see now we've got a new folder here which contains our digital SLR presets. And so, for instance, I know because I've read the manual of my Nikon that it shoots at 720p and it shoots at 24 frames per second. Um, or I might know that it shoots at 23.976, for instance, if I was doing uh, with a 7D. And you can see, I can say, all right, that's the sequence I want. However, one of the, uh, the uh, mantras of Adobe uh, recently has been getting things done. Um, a lot of the features you'll see in a lot of the Adobe applications is just ways to speed up the way you work. Little, ticks, little tips and tricks, little things that just make your life easier. And what they discovered is um, that that was really slowing people down. If you had to make a new sequence every time and decide what format you wanted and so on. So they added the ability to just drag a clip onto this little icon down here. And it'll immediately go ahead and make a sequence based on the settings of that particular clip. So there we have, I have my, seven, my uh, Nikon D300S footage in my timeline. Now, I'm using a thing called the Mercury Playback Engine, and I'll just show you here. I'm running on a MacBook Pro 13-inch, effectively the slowest MacBook you can buy. Um, and so, at the moment, the only renderer I have, cho I, I have to choose from is the Mercury Playback Engine software only. So, all of the acceleration that is being done is being done purely uh, via software. If, however, I had a desktop machine, be it a Windows 7 machine or a Mac Tower, running either a Quadro 4800 or a GeForce GTX 285, I would get additional hardware acceleration via the CUDA programming libraries of NVIDIA. This will do two things. Firstly, it'll give me additional layers of real time. It'll give me additional hardware accelerated effects in both transitions and uh, filter effects. It'll also give me a, a, a video out via either DVI or HDMI so I can get full time real time preview of my footage as well. But I'm still running a laptop. I still have access to the benefits of the Mercury playback engine. So I'm just going to go ahead and you'll see here a new feature in Premiere CS5 is the playback resolution. I've got my playback resolution currently set to one quarter. I could probably set that to uh, one half. My paused resolution is always set to full because I always want to see when I've paused a frame at the highest quality possible. But um, at that resolution, if I can press play, and you see I get real-time playback quite easily on this laptop. And it's playing back my 24 frames per second material off my Nikon D300S uh, with no conversion whatsoever. In fact, because the MJPEG compression of the Nikon uh, cameras is so, um, it doesn't tax the CPU at all, I could probably go ahead and set that resolution to full and it would still probably get uh, pretty smooth playback. And also, because I'm using the Mercury playback engine, you'll see I can, if I wanted to, I can change my view at any stage and it's not going to stop playback because the way the engine works, it's really sort of independent uh, to a lot of these interface uh, decisions. So I could go ahead and set my resolution to 75% or 100% at press pause and 
and you see I'm getting very fast interface on on a very uh, lowly laptop as it were so as far as editing uh, Nikon footage goes uh, it's very easy I can go ahead and you can see I can trim I can scrub I can use my JKL all very easily that's that's all fine and dandy let's go and try a codec that's probably a little bit more taxing on a CPU such as the 7D so I'm just going to go to my C5 CS5 assets and go to my 7D folder and I've got a, a variety of shots here it's going to go and grab one of these in here and once again this footage was shot 1280 by 720 however it was shot at 50 frames per second so if I go ahead and put that into my timeline here and make a new sequence I'm actually going to go ahead and set my playback resolution to one quarter because um, at 50 frames per second not only is the higher bitrate of the 7D footage um, going to stress the hard drive more playing back at 50 frames per second it is going to read that data significantly faster now considering I'm also I'm running a screen capture utility on top of uh, uh, Premiere as well it's going to probably push the, uh, the, uh, the, the limits of the hard disk not the limits of the CPU so I can go ahead and press play and I'm still getting fairly good playback um, and you'll see in a second I think we've got a nice little tilt down from memory it's just about to happen it's not the smoothest tilt down in the world there we are there's my tilt down there that's all well and good um, and fairly similar to the uh, D300S in terms of playback um, but really so far I haven't really shown you anything that is a major benefit compared to playing back footage that had been converted to another format such as ProRes 422 or DNX HD. I'm just going to actually pull that clip out of my timeline for a second because what I want to do is something that you couldn't do if you'd baked in the frame rate by converting to another format. I'm going to right hand mouse click on my clip and choose Mod modify interpret footage and you can see the frame rate by default is 50 frames per second because that's what the camera shot it at. However, I might want to play it back at 25 frames per second. Now, I'm not doing a slow-mo such as I normally would in a timeline where it's actually interpolating and in cre in in creating extra frames to make that uh, clip playback slower. I'm actually playing back those actual 50 frames per second just at a different rate, such as you would if you were shot on film. If you shoot film at, at 50 frames per second but play it back at 25 frames per second, it takes twice as long to play that film back. Exactly the same here. So I can punch in 25 frames per second. I'm not creating any additional content. I'm just playing back it differently. And you'll see here the duration of the clip before is 22 seconds and uh, 37 frames. I'll go back in and do that change again. Change that back to 25. So we're going from 22 seconds to 45 seconds. And I can go ahead and drop that in my timeline. And now the clip is, is set. It's You'll see that it's got a red marker over it because the timeline by default is a 50 frames per second timeline and I've just added what is now 25 frames per second material. That being said, if I press play, you'll see it plays back but now I get a nice ultra smooth playback because I'm actually playing it back at 25 frames per second. So really if you're actually shooting 720p and a lot of people are using 720p to get that really nice gorgeous slow-mo especially for music videos and so on. This way, instead of having to decide which clips you want to be in slow-mo before you start the edit and convert those particular ones using cinema tools to a different frame rate, you can now, as you're editing, you know, drop in a clip and say, you know what, I reckon that one would be good if I slowed it down just a little. Let's make that 30 frames per second, or let's make that one 28 frames per second. So you've really got the ability to actually make use of the, fi of the files in their, not only in their highest quality, but in the best way in terms of frame rate as well. So hopefully you found that interesting. Um, there will be a lot more of these little quick tips um, on my website coming up over the coming days. Um, in the meantime though, um, I would definitely suggest you uh, keep an eye on my website. Um, I will not only have these additional quick tips, but I'll also have uh, links to my upcoming um, CS5 uh, Connect sessions for Adobe, um, which will be available, or links to it will be available on my site uh, in the near future.